Hi, it's Wasa from I Care Pharmacy. Uh, I don't really know what to call this podcast. I'll call it Dad Talk for for this time. I'm uh, uh, with Albert. Um, after pointing opposite way, and then uh, Dacton uh, down below. So yeah, everyone here is kind of a relatively new dad, with uh, Dacton being uh, being the youngest dad. So uh, you know, I'll throw this to you, Dax. How's it How's it feel to be a dad? Oh, how does it feel? Um, I take it day by day yeah. because every day is completely different with Ellie. I think oh, I yeah. when I think I have her figured out, she switches things on me. She, she, oh, yeah. She's always one step ahead of me. She's, she's playing chess and I'm playing checkers. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one thing Dave, Dave always told me. He, he always told me, like, you always have to learn to adapt. Everything is, like, super different when you have kids and, and you you always have to be on your toes, right? And right when you think you have it figured out, then, you know, they throw you a curveball and then you're back to square one, right? Yeah, yeah. This this girl is a, she's very, pretty slick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, Albert uh, Albert was saying, uh, like, just uh, off the podcast here, that, uh, you know, he, Everett was not uh, feeling so hot last night, and he had a lot of uh, uh, teething going on, so because of that, like, when, I don't, you're, Ellie's probably not at the stage where she, she doesn't have any teeth coming in, but, like, we noticed, like, when uh, Atlas had his teeth come in, there'd be a lot of, like, mucus, right, because of oh. the teeth coming in from the because I think it, it does put a lot of like um, pressure on the sinuses when the okay. teeth comes in. So we, we notice like his mucus production and goes through the roof and he's like, it looks like he's sick, but he's, he's, and he, and he ran a fever. Actually his fever was crazy. His fever was like 40 degrees. Oh, wow. And, and for like five to six days. What? What, what did you guys do for it? He's a bit of a red flag. Is that well, we use like we. <laughs> I think that's like four days past the red. Flag. I know, I know, I know, I know. Isn't I know. Brain I know. damage or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we we called a we called his pediatrician. We called his doctor, and they were like, just uh, just make sure you give him lots of Tylenol and Advil. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Give them lots of Tylenol and Advil, and then um, and but the Tylenol and Advil wasn't bringing his fever down enough, so we had to give him cool baths. So we uh, we throw oh, wow. him bathtub, and then with the bathtub we could get his fever down to thirty six degrees. So uh, with his uh, with his bathtub with, with his cool bath, we're able to get his fever down to thirty six. Okay. With the Tylenol and Advil, it wouldn't come down, so we needed the bath to have it come down. Oh, 36. Wow. 36. That's really low, isn't it? Like, a, like an ice bath? <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's what he normally runs. He normally runs 36. Was that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, no, I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't throw him in the Arctic waters. <laughs> Must have gave him the treatment for serotonin syndrome. <laughs> Put ice on his uh, groin and his arm. <laughs> Is that, is that the treatment for serotonin syndrome? Uh, yeah, if if you overheat and you can't you can't cool them down, yeah. Then you start applying uh, ice. You put them in an ice bath, but you could put oh. ice in their groin and their auxilla because that's where like most of the blood flow is. Oh, oh I see. I see. Oh, actually, how often do you see that, Dax? You know, I'm so oh, I'm tired of counseling on it and never actually seeing that in person. Serotonin syndrome. Yeah. I think I've only seen it like maybe they well, not seen it. I've only had a, one of my patients have it like once or something like that. Yeah. yeah. At, at, po at the poison center, we see it when I was working there. I we see it all the time, right? Oh, really? But, but these guys are trying to kill themselves with the with the medication, right? Oh yeah, fair enough. Or or they, like they, or, or they went to uh, to or they went to EDC and just one overdid time. it a little bit. <laughs> 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 just <hold it. laughs> when, uh, but uh when i propose like one of the topics being like uh butt creams and that sort of thing uh okay uh Dacton had said he's kind of an expert in it now so i wanted to uh, i wanted to hear hear your take on butt creams yes okay, please okay. okay so the first thing is um the product that we use at home is pseudo creme right oh, okay pseudo cream yeah 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 no, no, no! You got it wrong there, Bear. Pseudo -creme? creme? It's pseudo creme. It's pseudo creme. Is it, is it French? Is it French? Is that why it's creme? 
Oh no! If you if you actually look at the um, if you look at the label, there's yeah. no there's, there's no, no a. a. There's no a. Okay. But there's a. Is it not C R E M E like cream like? Here. Um, Let me get it. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. I think no, no, no. That's not something because like say like creme de menthe. Is it not spelled the same way? Is there an accent on that? Oh, man, there's no e. There's no e. Oh, there is no e. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. For, Pharmacist has it. Pharmacist had it wrong forever. Yeah, <laughs> we need to rewrite the books at this point. So, like, like I don't know pseudocrem actually. So, uh, oh, what is okay. the uh, what is the percentage? Like, is it zinc or zinc based? Yeah, yeah. Still zinc. We we started using this because our pediatrician recommended it, right? Okay. And it, 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 it's just a zinc product. It's like fifty percent zinc. But supposedly. 50%? Oh, no, no, one five. One oh, five. Okay, one five. Okay. <laughs> oh, like 50. oh, my God. 50% is going to like burn, create an ulcer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, supposedly, supposedly, the zinc oxide also has anti inflammatory effects, eh? Oh, it does? Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a barrier, but it also has anti inflammatory. That, that guy swears by it, our pediatrician. He's been practicing for like 30 years. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, knock on wood, we haven't had any, yeah. any like severe diaper rash with her. Yeah, like the one thing was like we were like we sometimes use like a aisle space. Yeah. But I find like 25%. Like the aisle space is 25, right? And so I find yeah. aisle space to be maybe a little bit too thick when he has like an active active flare-up of diaper rash. Because like when you put it on, it goes on so thick. And I find it's like so like irritating and it's so sensitive area that i don't know how to put it on because it's so thick i yeah, agree so, oh, yeah it's just that good oh, oh yeah no i was gonna say i think that's why this 15 percent is the perfect is the perfect ratio yeah because you can still spread it on nicely right and you know how um with, with butt protectors it's really like a, a barrier so you want to make sure you cover every nook and cranny eh Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Bear. Oh, no, I was, I was, I was saying like I agree with you guys because I, I don't think the percentage of zinc correlates to, yeah. to, to effectiveness. Like, like desitin goes up to forty percent, and then you got like the, like penitens. I think it's at seventeen or something like that. But, but at the same time, if you're right, if you're not able to spread it evenly, or if it's too irritating, um, I don't know if it, it like draws. Does it draw more moisture at forty, like excessively? Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm not. I don't. I don't think it does that. Um, I don't think, I think the zinc oxide does that. No, I think the thing is what I noticed. Is I'm not sure if it's the way we're applying it, but do you guys find that by the next change, the next diaper change, it looks like he had no diaper cream on at all? Oh, 100 percent. It looks like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, where'd it go? Uh... <laughs> no, no, see, when I use pseudo creme, I can still see there's like a, a kind of a white haze. Do you guys yeah, even see nothing? Sometimes there's a white haze, but usually, what I, I, I have the experience that Albert has where it's usually just like gone. Okay, okay. Well, here's the next question then how are you applying it, Was? Like, what do you use to apply it with? Oh, like I just use my hands. Oh, okay, okay. Here, hold on, there, guys. Let me, let me. Oh, okay, sure. Oh, there you so this is what I use. Oh, or, uh, I it? think someone's breaking up. It's 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 a butt spatula. Where did you? Where do you? <laughs> where do you get um, a butt spatula? <laughs> <laughs> Is this from the sex dungeon? <laughs> do, you, do you have someone? <laughs> yeah, have some yeah. Sizes or? <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is this is a it's an app. No, it's a kid's product, man. It's not for adults. <laughs> where, where, where can I get it? Oh, kid, you can just buy, buy it on Amazon. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I just scoop it up and then. You can actually get really nicely in between the um, like the gluteal cleft, right? Yeah. Like the butt cheeks. Yeah. Inside yeah. there, so that you the don't butthole. get butthole. Gluteal cleft. <laughs> <No. laughs> <No. laughs> it's even longer to say that. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I mean, not everyone's going to know what, uh, what, what that gluteal cleft is, but butthole, everyone knows what that is. <laughs> no, no, you, you don't want to put it in the butthole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not in the butthole. Be, between the cheeks, <laughs> between the cheeks and the perineum area. However, you know what the perineum area, right? Oh, so, I love the perineum. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I learned that. that terminology from Albert back in pharmacy. Perineum. Yeah. And I, I think you taught me the... I think I think you taught me other words for that area. Oh. Mm. Gooch? What, 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 what's it? No, no, no. Oh, you taught me that. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think I, I don't think I taught you that. I think you made that no. up yourself. Okay, Watson well, can edit that out later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the one that, one. Like, yeah, go ahead, Dax. Oh, no, no. Go, go ahead, Watson. I was going to say, you know, one that we use that we like just for an everyday one is... Uh, the live clean diaper ointment. Like I really, I really like that one, but I don't think it's like uh I don't think it's um, a zinc based one though, but it's, it's a nice, like everyday use one for, like, in between. Right. Are you, are you guys, are you using the, the pseudo cream every day or do you just use it on flare ups? Oh, the, the, the pseudo. Yeah, no, yeah, we, use, we use it. We, we use it. Yeah. You, you lost me there. Cause I didn't know what you were saying was, <laughs> um, so um what is that I, I use it after every change is that kind of preventative yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah we I, don't, doing I don't wait for it you don't wait for it yeah we were doing it every change as well but, but i didn't I, I i stopped doing that for some reason but i don't think there's any harm in doing it for every change just to kind of be preventative about it though so am I yeah i, I do every us? change too to be honest with you every change too okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. every change yeah, yeah. yeah. actually that, that might be the reason why he yeah. asked diaper rash flare up for so long yeah um yeah but um but speaking of which that that lift play is that is that a shopper's thing or uh no it's um oh no, it's just his own brand it's like uh like you can get it from superstore and that sort of thing too and oh okay. Walmart, so it's a, it's its own thing yeah oh, okay i see i see yeah. you know you know we, we were always taught like you know you don't need all the things and uh like you know our um like naturopathic products and stick 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 with you know more evidence-based ingredients yeah. like but then i think same thing happened to us too like when everyone was first born i can't remember which standard sink cream we were using and he was for some reason reacting to it and then we ended up getting a, a fancy one from one of our friends uh do you know what that cream was called that, that you can buy it off amazon as well Little peas, you guys heard that? Um, it's, it's an, anyway, it's, I think it's a whole line of products, but then for some reason, their cream was also non zinc based and for some reason contained a lot of things that I thought was pretty bad, like fragrance, but it actually worked out really well. So I, yeah. I, I'm not even going to tell other people anymore. Yeah, yeah. How, how was um, how was ever reacting to it? Like, what was what was going on? Um, but was turning red or like what was going on? Well, and, and that's the thing. When it comes to diaper rash, you're not really sure if it's just unresolved by what you're doing, or if it's being, or if it's made worse by what you're adding. Like, so like for example, is he is he reacting? Is he having like allergic reaction to one of the ingredients, or is he just simply just having unresolved a diaper rash? You know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. To stay red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of what happened at, at the beginning. So yeah, I guess it, it doesn't hurt to just switch to something else rather than trying to prove your theory, right? I I, I think I think what, I guess maybe what I'm trying to say is like what you, what you learn in in school is not necessarily going to work for every kid. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Pete, he's in a pod, smooth as a baby's bum ball. Anyway, it's like oil. anyway just throwing that out there. It's like, it's like fruit oil, sunflower oh, oil, like fruit oil, oil, sunflower oil, sweet almond oil, beeswax, really lavender, good. chamomile, blah blah blah. So that, fruit, that fruit. sounds delicious in a maybe even like in a cocktail or something. Yeah, maybe if oh, I was, I, was, was I, I was thinking a sandwich. Sandwich. <laughs> lavender sandwich. Lavender sandwich. <laughs> Perennial. <laughs> But uh, oh yeah, the is other CB is there CBD oil in there too, there? <laughs> yeah, 
Yes. That's <laughs> probably the whole thing what I ordered. <laughs> like the first ingredient, eh? Twenty percent THC. Albert's <laughs> 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 like one for you, one for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Roll up a joint. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, uh, the other topic I wanted to cover was uh, just um, daycares because uh, you're, you're not there yet, Bax, but me and Albert learned how difficult it is to kind of get uh, your little one into a daycare. And yeah. you, have to, you have to really be ahead of the curve in, in order to make sure that they, you know, by the time Monica is at that stage that, you know, you do have a daycare lined up. If, if, yeah, is Ellie going to go to daycare or is someone going to be able to uh, help out at home instead? Or like, do you think she'll go to daycare? Yeah. 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 Actually, you know, funny you bring this up boss. Like I think when I, when I first went back to, I was doing my, I was on my clerkship. Right. And I was yeah. talking to this uh, coworker of mine and she was asking me about the same thing about daycare. And then um, she, she asked me how old Ellie was. And I'm like, Oh, Ellie's like a month and a half. And she's like, you should sign up for daycare right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Calgary. Yeah. yeah. Calgary might be crazier. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so she definitely is going to daycare. And um, yeah, I, I didn't know about that until she enlightened me. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, did you guys end up putting Ellie on a list? Uh, yeah. Actually, Mon, Mon called the place uh, right, right by our house. So she's on oh, a wait list, but I'm not sure how long this wait list is going to be. Uh, you know, speaking of weightless, I want to do some kind of uh, 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 humorous here. Like, uh, uh, Doreen actually told us to do the same thing, uh, you know, have them on a waitlist uh, because it takes that long for to get into the one that you want. So Victoria was shopping around all the daycares in our area, you know, getting one close to home, close to our family, that sort of thing. And, yeah, waitlists were crazy. And then for some reason... The one in the next neighborhood over, uh, Blue Quill area, had a Montessori uh, daycare that had no wait list. And <laughs> now you're wondering, why isn't there a wait list? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey AB, I swear I was gonna I was gonna mention this thing because Monica's brother was just talking about it. He just put his kid in this um in this Montessori. That's like a it's a way of teaching kids, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> But but Montessori is I think it's it's a pretty well known uh, chain of daycares that have uh, that are like like you know I think they're well known for having like really good programs there. Yeah. But Montessori's name doesn't actually mean anything when you're in their like daycare daycares like like for for, for little kids because like there is no program when when you're there like they have like like yeah until there's three. Because yeah, so three years old. Oh, yeah, it functions like any other daycare. Like they have the same sort of sensory activities, but there's no like they teach them math at one, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> maybe on the south side they are, not in the north for sure. Well <laughs> <laughs> they wait until they're ten. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, it was kind of funny because when he was telling me the story about the Montessori, he's like when he first went there just to kind of see how yeah. things are. Yeah. Like, the first kid he saw had all these rashes on him. This, then this other kid, like he was um he was like always scratching himself and he smelled really bad. You know, Dax, so, that's exactly what Vix was saying too, because like she she notes that Blue Quill is a diverse community that you know you got like all walks of life there, right? So how do you uh how do you diplomatically bring up you know, if kids are clean there or if they're un unneglected, I think is what was, was how she ordered it. Yeah. Without, without implying that there's like, say, all impoverished clientele or or, or like drug dealers or, or, or what. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's the, 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 the funny part of it too, um, the location for this place, Yeah, it's almost the equivalent of like, Abbotsfield is, is that is that in Edmonton like Abbotsfield yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of well yeah, so, so, so it's like the ghetto right and I'm like so I'm not gonna bring my kid to the ghetto <laughs> well you know but that's the funny thing because you're so close to Westbrook that there there was like 
those Lamborghini Urus in the same um, parking parking lot there as there was like a, you know normal people. So so yeah, I, I think there was a blend of everything, but um, we were just trying to imply if that particular class was you know. To her standards. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so so that that's what he thought originally, and I followed up with him. I, yesterday, actually, we had dinner, and um, mm-hmm. I followed up with him and asked him how everything went with that, and he actually said no. It was, um, I think it was coincidental that when he first saw the place, he saw these kind of unique children, right? mm-hmm. <laughs> to put it, to put it uh, nicely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but afterwards, <laughs> afterwards, everything seemed normal, and he he was saying that his well, so his daughter is three years old, right? And mm-hmm. she's actually like learning numbers, and you know, he was surprised from that. He, he, yeah. he likes it. Yeah, he's gonna continue. Mm-hmm. He said. Oh yeah, yeah. No, actually, after our interview, we were very really satisfied as well. She answered that question actually super uh, 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 diplomatically as well, um, uh, and 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 uh, professionally. So yeah, I think we're probably gonna go here too, right? Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only one we've actually had an interview with you can, so you far. Can, you can always treat rashes, eh? There's, <laughs> there's always medication for rashes, if, if that helps. And head lice. <laughs> and scabies. <laughs> it's the body lice. <laughs> bed, bed, bed bugs are what you do not want to get. <laughs> <laughs> what, sorry? What, what should I want to avoid? Bed, bed bugs. Bed bugs. Oh, bed are, bugs. Yeah, d- difficult to treat. No, that happens in five-star hotels, man. What is that? Same with huh? No, no, no. It, bed bugs can happen in a five star hotel, and headlights can happen on. It only happens on clean heads, so it's like. It can happen at, at a fancy one too. Yeah, no, it's it's just that bed bugs. Have you guys ever had a bed bug infestation before? Oh yeah, what's up, had right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's bring that up without any context. Finally, your first first life bed bug. No, my it happened at, at, uh, it wasn't, at my uh, it out. rental. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> we're we're, we're, um, we're digressing. Aren't you just supposed to like weigh your pillow to see if it's like super heavy? For bed bugs? No, like they actually had like uh, oh. we we brought in like uh, someone to inspect. So mm-hmm. they'll go, go in, they'll find the actual bed bug, and then they have to like match it up to like you know they're looking at under it a microscope or something like that or whatever just to make sure that it is actually a bed bug right and then oh. then you have to get the tenants to leave like for four or five hours and then they fumigate mm-hmm. the whole place but then they can come back in four or five hours it's fine like the fum- fumigation is non-toxic and uh and then they non-toxic? Do another, I didn't know. yeah and then they do another treatment oh. in a week and then you're done so it's a, lot, it's a lot easier now. It's only non-toxic in the north side. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly safe in north side. Absolutely. But like, the, re- the reason why... <laughs> just, to, just to clear it up. Just to clear it up. The reason why we got bed bugs is because one of our tenants worked in a hotel downtown. Right? Oh. And I think he was in a profession where he was like, you know... In, in contact with a lot of uh, you know he's doing maintenance and those sort of things so I think somehow he he got in contact with a bed bug at the hotel and then he brought that home and that was that oh okay yeah 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 the, 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 the place I the place that I was uh, looking after you had to get treated four times man four times four, four times? times yeah yeah that, that's what I mean by these these bed bugs they're like pesky things right oh yeah. Well, Mike, why didn't you just throw the mattress out? Oh, well, each time we threw away the mattress and the couch. <laughs> each time you threw away the mattress. And the couch, buddy. <laughs> the couch, too. And the couch. Yeah. I was about to rip the carpets up, man. <laughs> Wait, so was this in a condo or a house? Uh, this this was like, um, it was a place that I was I was just looking after, right? But it was a... Um, it was like a condominium apartment kind of thing. Because like like my rental is a condo, right? So I had to pay for the treatment of my place and all adjacent units, right? Above and below and beside, oh, right? Wow. So, mm-hmm. so just to make sure that there is nothing going on, 
and they're yeah. not traveling back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. So fumigated my neighbors upstairs and downstairs. Yeah. Wow. Is, is that normal or is that, this sounds kind of overkill. I think it's overkill just based upon like the condo board, right? The condo board sets the regulations in and they just want to make sure that there's like zero chance of an infestation throughout the whole building. So they're like, okay, we're going to treat everything adjacent. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Usually you can just like look, right? You check the bed to see if there's Before, any. Yeah, yeah. You flip, the, flip the edges up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and it's, the, it's the edges on the box spring too, right? That you got to really check. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we didn't have a box spring, but we had like the IKEA slats. So, but I think they could probably hide it underneath the slats or something like that too, though, potentially. Jax, are you still holding Ellie this whole time? I, I don't, she's sleeping right now, and if I let her down, she's gonna cry. She she just oh. got her two month immunization bear. Oh, yeah, yeah she she's kind of cranky. Mm, yeah, no, I don't I don't blame you. Everett just got his uh, one year ones, and oh man, I, I, I they use like our luteal injection uh, lace, like one and a half inch for for him. Yeah, the top one was excessive. <laughs> That's what I was telling Mon. This nurse had a one inch needle, and I'm one like, and a half. It's gonna oh, impale this is one and a half. Yeah, yeah. So come on the other I side. Like, I was like, this is way too much. I'm like, I'm sure the lady's hitting bone, right? Why couldn't you do the five eights like what we do for kids, right? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. weird because I never actually got to go in and see the uh, injection itself. So, oh, it's huge and ruthless. Yeah, yeah, ruthless. yeah the lady's I mean, like. The lady's like, hold, hold up Ellie's arms, like, hold them up against yeah. her chest. And then yeah. after, she just grabs her thigh and then she jabs this thing in. Yeah. I'm like, holy man. Why yeah, is it used to be an needle? inch? It's an inch? It's a, uh, yeah, no. so she, well, I, I thought mine was an inch at least. I'm not sure if it was an inch and a half. Yeah, it was an inch. For sure it was an inch, yeah. Well, I, I might be embellishing because I was kind of, like, scared. But, like, it, it feels like it was, like, about an inch and a half length. And But the funny thing is, like, she was so skilled because, you know, you know how like we have to do injections for five year olds? That ain't fun, right? So like she's probably got a technique for doing babies, and she's like putting every in all these jujitsu moves, like like all like <laughs> having like like turn like a human pretzel, but like oh. it's just so that she could expose the one limb each time and while keeping them locked up, and it's pretty it was pretty impressive. Oh, so wow. yeah, and and like it happened so fast that he didn't really even register each one. You know, it's just like it's like. You know, like he didn't have time to even process it. Even you probably cut off his carotid, man. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just went limp. Turned into an MMA bout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder you forgot about everything. I think he, I think he literally cut off the <laughs> oh, just like a pile of limp babies in the waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just give them an hour they'll come too it's fine <laughs> yeah i don't know like i i really think that the needle was overkill for, for ellie it was just way too much yeah it was it was it was huge you saw it right you didn't see oh no no like yeah yeah anyway but yeah well like, basically like one almost one every limb plus 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 the butt oh my god what how many shots was that it was four, right? One, two, one, two yeah. four. It was four. Jeez. Yeah, four, four, four for the routine one year stuff. Oh, three plus flu shot. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. That was the flu shot. Oh, with the flu shot. They get like okay. new, and then they get like the MMR. Kind of like the other one. How did uh, how how did uh, how did Everett do? Like, I know for Atlas, there was probably he was okay for a day, and then after a day, he got a fever. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah, the, the nurse just recommended us to uh, Predos. Like, oh, really? Right afterwards, yeah. Oh, mm. okay. okay. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Predos with Talamo, or? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, no, not, not Predos, but, like, after she was done, give her some Talamo right away. Yeah, exactly. She's going to have some pain for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's, I think it's, all the parents I talk to, they kind of say it's, like, guaranteed that they're going to be in a little bit of pain and have a bit of a fever yeah. mm -hmm. you know what's kind of weird though so you know how if you're less than three months old you can't use Tylenol right or there's no dosing for it really if you look at the bottle 
It'll well, say like two, two months. Oh, I just posted by week. No, but yeah, okay. usually. Um, well, if you look at the Tano, the Tano uh, infant, the drop, yeah. it actually says on there like if they're less than three months old. Consult a physician, right? Consult a physician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's only because they they haven't done testing because eth ethically or even like clinically there wasn't enough data or something or or they just weren't allowed to test. But I, I thought we were allowed to dose it by weight even from from uh, newborn. Yeah, yeah, you are. I mean, they do it in the hospital all the time, I think. But yeah, yeah, as a as a as a patient, like you know, as a pharmacist, we know that. But as a patient, you're probably going to be like, what am I supposed to do, right? So, oh yeah, no, I I never read that that product monograph on the bottle because it's always yeah. like many layers of, you know, like uh, fear, <laughs> layers of fear, <laughs> layers of fear. Yeah, all these yeah. layers to like cut out words and everything. By the time it got to the actual printed bottle, you're only getting like maybe like a tenth of it or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So very conservative, right? Yeah, because when I yeah. was working at that, um, you know, that medication line. We would get calls from parents all the time asking, hey, how do you dose this thing? Yeah, exactly. What are you doing? Leave your kid with a fever at that age? Like, yeah. uncontrolled? So, yeah, no, I, I totally... Yeah, so you've been giving Ellie talent on it, right? Uh, yeah, I think we got like about three doses <clears throat> in her since since her injection. Do you guys have a shortage in, uh, in most places in Calgary too? I got the hookups, Bear. Nice, nice. <laughs> There's no shortage in the trans family here <laughs> with any drug. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think there was, yeah. I'm pretty sure there was a shortage. Oh, there's, yeah, there still is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I haven't been, I haven't been in the pharmacy game for a while, so <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on in pharmacy at all. Yeah, no, like we, like you can compound it. So we have like, Compounded formulations. Compounded. Oh yeah. my god! Wow. Yeah. But so, well, I don't understand how come no one's compounding an infant concentration. Because frankly, if I had my way, I would just give infant concentration all the way through to adult out of it because it's just less volume. Oh, but there's something eight milligrams per mil versus one sixty per teaspoon. Oh yeah, the infant one. Yeah, that's a that's a weird thing where the infant one is more concentrated than than yeah. children's. Yeah, so it's, it's actually, there's actually no need for the chung. If you know how to dose it by weight, you're better off using infant all the time. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. all, all that sugar, like all the um, the sorbitol yeah. that's inside the children's one, if you want to get too high of a dose, you get diarrhea from it, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and frankly, you know, like for an infant, like three, two, three mils is a mouthful. Like they can spit that up easily. But, you know, one mil, it's less likely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Heck, we can come up with like a, I was thinking we should come up with an even more concentrated version. <laughs> <laughs> or will accidental overdoses go through the roof? No, oh, you know what's interesting, eh? In kids, they can actually yeah. tolerate more Tylenol than an adult. Really? What's the yeah, yeah. Not, the max is not the same for kids? Uh like for toxicity for kids, you could do 200 milligrams per kilogram, one dose. But, but if you're Talk. listening to this, please don't do that. <laughs> if you're listening to this, please don't, don't test do that. that, guys. Don't <laughs> test that. <laughs> this is all theoretical. No, 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 no. That, that, that's that's toxicity level, right? Yeah, yeah, toxicity level, not therapeutic. Yeah, toxicity. And then yes. for adults, it's 150. Oh, because their their liver size relative to their body is larger, mm -hmm. and they also do different types of metabolism with the um, tunnel, right? That right. makes sense. Yeah. But I thought like they manufactured the volume of infant Tylenol such that in the event they were to ingest the entire bottle, they're still just under the limit. That's true. Yeah, that, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but where I was going with that, Bear, is I think your theory makes sense to to make it more potent if you if you don't want the kids to spit up because <laughs> it's safer in kids. <laughs> is it safer? Because you can get up to 200 milligrams per kilogram before you get toxic as compared to 150 milligram per kilogram in adults. Yeah, we should make like some sort of like internasal formulation. Just like just done. You know what I mean? Or like, no, it doesn't have to be in the nose. Just have the face. Just like, just, just like <laughs> spray like a Windex bottle. <laughs> so even the remnants, even the drip off is, is enough to treat, right? 
Oh yeah, well, and everyone within the three feet radius also overdoses too. <laughs> All right, we, we got we got like a minute left before uh, we get kicked off uh, Zoom here again. So, oh, did we actually talk about diaper rashes enough? You think? Oh yeah, no? yeah. No, that was plenty. Yeah. You guys, uh, yeah. Thanks so much for. Uh, no, you did. You guys did a good job. So yeah, thanks for like I can I can throw another link for us just to shoot the breeze or whatever. But uh, this is yeah, like uh, this is the end of the podcast. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye. <laughs>